What would you do if you only had a limited time left to live? I would eat some food. Rest of what I have left with the with the people I love, you know, my my kids and and my uh, and my loved ones, and uh, and to try and leave some memories that are going to last beyond uh, beyond my death. So my life is motivated by hate and revenge, which means if with the limited amount of time I have left, I would target my number one opposition, my biggest enemy, and I would make his life as miserable as possible. I would do everything that I ever wanted to do with no regrets. Good answer. I'll be spend the last minutes with my family. Um, if I had a limited time left to live, I think I would quit my job as much as I love it and spend the time traveling. I want to see the world, see so many places, and I'd take my kids and spend that time with them just to give them, you know, the best part of me. And i go visit everybody I haven't seen in a while. I think I would try to uh, pay off other people's debts and, um, Say goodbye to everybody. As much as possible and go see the world. I would travel a lot because I want to see the rest of the world. Uh, do everything that I wanted to do. Time with family, uh, spend time with friends, you know, and that's it. Not, I hang out at Disneyland the rest of my time. That's right. Uh, I would spend time uh, with my family and friends. I'd want to see all my friends and family for as much as possible and travel a lot with them. I would definitely spend time with my family like, and do things that I like to do, you know? Like have fun and definitely be with my family. Alright, so uh, <laughs> a lot of things I tell my family that I love them. And try to see if I can just like go visit some place like a resort. I probably play video games or something. <laughs> okay, so if I had a limited time to live, I'd probably spend the rest of my time with my family because family is number one, and I believe they put so much like time and effort into me. Might as well give that back in my happy moments. So that's have and make it a happy moment too, like playing video games, chat and laugh and watching the TV. It's just end it off in a happy note. Mm -hmm. So if I died the next day, I would send out very vague warnings to all the people I know, complaining or just saying that it was their fault, and then I would die the next day. I would definitely go see my parents, but then I would go to the gym and pump iron. Yes, sir. The world and try as many new things as possible. Are you gonna ask me or just? Alright, uh, if I had a limited time to live, I would try to spend as much time with my family and friends, and just try to do things I've never done before. Just traveling and having fun. A quote from Station Eleven states, I've been thinking lately about immorality, what it means to be remembered, what I want to be remembered for, certain questions concerning memory and fame. This quote emphasizes how to leave Earth and your loved ones with kindness and remembrance. The best way to accomplish this is to keep busy by checking things off your bucket list and making memories with family and friends. Make sure you have traveled and explored different parts of the world. If you have anything valuable in your possession, make plans of who you would like to pass those items down to. This quote relates to our thesis because it explains how everyone obtains a limited lifespan, although some pass away sooner than others. And it is important to try to accomplish things you've always wanted to do because you never know what day will be your last. What was lost in the collapse? Almost everything, almost everyone, but there is still such beauty. This quote encapsulates everything about our question because while it captures all the tragedy of the book, it also captures what our characters look for the most when they felt like there was nothing left. After the collapse, all seemed lost. You never truly knew how much time you had left to live and yet through the darkness, our characters saw light and beauty in whatever they could. For example, Clark creates a museum to remember all the great things in the world. And similarly, our interviewees, when we asked our question, needed time to think. 
But after thinking a bit more about it, most of them immediately started thinking about uh, what they love the most, whether that may be spending time with their family or traveling the world. For me, I would follow a similar path. I would want to spend time with those I love and care for the most because those are the things that truly matter in life. Death is at the doorstep of every person. It's not until a change in perspective on the life we have left to live do we start to preserve our greatest memories in the short life that we have and begin understanding the fragility of human life. And all of this connects to our thesis because we all know that our life is going to end one day, but it's only when we really start to think about how close death might be do we start to rethink what we do with our lives. The house is silent now, and she feels like a stranger here. This life was never ours, she whispers to the dog who has been following her from room to room, and Lily wags her tail and stares at Miranda with wet brown eyes. We were only ever borrowing it. The quote shows how murky the concept of a life is. Miranda, for example, goes along with the celebrity lifestyle out of her love for Arthur, but finds that life isn't for her. It shows that even though we live our lives a certain way, that life may not be ours. In other words, people tend to live out lives they may not enjoy, in turn avoiding creating a life that's theirs, borrowing a different lifestyle instead. This is where the quote ties into the thesis, as our perspectives on life change when we know how little time is left. Simply put, if the time left is far too small, one will wish to spend that time living their own version of life instead of borrowing one from others. Spending the rest of your life how you want it to becomes imperative, because death is coming soon and nothing else matters. This is when the question of what life is ours becomes important. Conforming is no longer the priority. All that matters is those few moments left and what we will leave behind. Our final moments show who we really are. Our thesis is everything eventually comes to an end. Yet it is only when the end is close that the question of how to spend our rest of our time becomes far more important. The quote, he liked the thought of ships moving over the water towards another world, just out of sight. Chapter 55, page number 333. It's a symbolic representation of the afterlife. Like what would happen if you die? and what the afterlife is mostly like. It appears to be another world of sorts, as the quote, si that's the quote says, as it moves into a world out of sight, which means you cannot see the afterlife. He mentions ships as a place of souls, towards another world as towards the afterlife, that perfectly describes the end of the book, as people escaping this deadly plague that is killing everyone eventually kills them and brings them to the afterlife, which is the other world they were talking about. So this quote perfectly sums up the entire story of Station Eleven.